Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, I have a lot of things I want to share with you today. But before we do that, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Now, you see, God has made this provision for you. And it's high time you start enjoying it. So say this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, thank you, Lord Jesus. We, we, we were talking, I was sharing with you from Mark chapter 16. And when verse 17, and Jesus speaking, I said, These signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. And the first thing Jesus said is that in his name, that's authority. In his name, you will cast out the devils. Now, he says, in my name shall they cast out devil. Now, he used the word shall. I want you to follow me. Now, in, in English, the word shall and will, they look alike, but everyone, especially in, in law, when you use the word shall, you're saying this is not something that um, someone can think, maybe I don't have to do it. No. No. When they use the word shall it's a must it is a must so when jesus said in my name shall they cast out devils jesus is saying you must cast out devils you can't help it so when you are there trying to boast and say me i don't dabble into those things i've never cast out devils brother we, we need to start looking at you with one eye are you a believer in christ jesus are you a believer in Christ Jesus? Jesus said, in my name shall they cast out devils. He says, shall. You must cast out devils. It's a must. You, you see, it has nothing to do whether you like it or you don't like it. Why? Why? I said, that's the first thing Jesus said. We used to know if you're a believer or not. Why? Because the earth is filled with demonic activities. Oh, you don't know. You don't, you don't understand. You don't know how many people have killed themselves because of this. They were normal. Just they had a voice and they went to hang themselves. They had a voice. Many people who are supposed to have made progress in their life, they just had a voice. They had a voice. Oh, that person doesn't like you. And that was all. Oh, that person is trying to lure you into... That was all. You think that, mm, I was just thinking. Uh-uh. You see, the same way a lot of believers have not grown accustomed to hearing the voice of God. It's the same way a lot of believers don't realize that many times they are hearing the voice of the devil and they are responding to it. The Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. He, he doesn't just come and start speaking with you. He knocks first. In the book of Revelation, Jesus speaking to one of the churches, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock if any man hears and opens i will come in and i'll sup with him take notes i will knock first if they hear and open so if i knock and they don't hear i won't come in though i knocked if they hear and they don't open i won't come in though i knocked see that now but they have to hear and then they open when they open, they welcome me in. Then I will sup with them. Lots and lots of people who claim to be believers, 
are not having this fellowship with the Holy Spirit. They are not having this fellowship with God. So he's been knocking. How does he knock? In scriptures, you remember the story of Samuel. He was knocking. Samuel, Samuel. That's how he knocks. He will call your attention to something. Moses was at the burning bush. That was a knocking. He saw the bush was on fire, but it was not consumed. He, he was observant enough to look at it and come, hold on, the, the leaves are still green. Oh, maybe the fire just started. No, by now from experience, the leaves should be turning brown and black. Even the smoke arising from this thing doesn't look like something is burning. What kind of fire is this? And he goes close to like, look, See, now he, the Lord was knocking and what did he do? He didn't just see, like, what's this? And then start running away. No, he says, let me pay attention to this. You see, it was when he turned aside to pay attention that the Lord spoke to him. Samuel also, it was when Eli told him that, look, this is how to respond when you hear that voice again. Say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. It was when he did that, that the Lord began to speak with him. So many now was that he came in and he began to sup with them. Now that supping doesn't mean he will bring food and you sit down and start eating. No, we eat his word. We eat his word. Oh, you don't, you don't understand what it is to sup with the Lord. Now, now, I come on. You, you, you remember Jesus fasted for 40 days and, and, and 40 nights, right? Now, now you, you see people who go on 40 days fast. And then they struggle and struggle and struggle. By the time after they've done 15 days, they begin to struggle and struggle. Ah, hey, should I? Should I continue? Nah, nah. And then they, they ah, no, I must try. 20 days. Ah, it's really 20 days. Oh, God, help me. Oh, God, help me. And then they go 30 days. Wow, 35 days, 36, 37. Ah, it's really one day. Hey, that's not how Jesus fasted for 40 days. That's not how Moses fasted for 40 days. I mean, these guys were with the Lord one day, two days, three days, 10 days, 15, 20, 30 days. And then the Lord says, it's all right, you can go. I can go. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, can go for now. All right. And then, ah, I've not eaten. You see, that's when they react. They didn't set out to say, I'm going to fast for 40 days. They were in the presence of God for 40 days. They, while they were there, they were not battling with hunger. They were not about, should I eat or should I not eat? Why? Because they were being fed by his word. He was supping with them. Now, if you've experienced this before, you know, it's, it's maybe not for that long. But you see, it's the same thing. If you stay with him, if you desire him, you will spend so long a time with him without realizing it. Why? Because what he is giving to you is sweeter than high Kaliba celebrity Kashiana. There is, there is a word that is beyond the scriptures. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. You know, sometimes you know you, you hear, you know, you I I know the sincerity of, 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 of their hearts. Let me say that before I say what I want to say. So this is not a way to spite anyone or bring you down. There is a sincerity in your heart. But you see, you, you ought to grow to this place where you differentiate. Like the Bible said, the word of God, it divides between bones and marrows and, and it descends the thoughts and intents of the heart. You grow to that point where you are not sourcing the word of God from scriptures alone see you've grown you've gotten to that point where he visits you and he sobs with you then you begin to realize that he's bigger than the scriptures and truly speaking as you hear his voice the scriptures come alive in you so you're not knowing the scriptures to quote it anymore. You are 
knowing it because you are seeing that this thing is truth. If you've not experienced this, you will never know what I'm talking about. You can be in his presence. And that's why you can find someone who's not educated enough to read. Will be quoting scriptures. And he's so accurate, you'll be wondering, how did he learn it? He didn't learn it. He didn't learn it. He has received the word of God. And when he received the word of God, the scriptures came alive in him. So when now I see that thing happen in me, when he is speaking and there is need to quote the scriptures, he's not quoting the Bible. He's quoting He's quoting the Spirit of God. That's what he's quoting. And then you find him, now because what the Spirit of God is telling him is true, you find him saying, just like you read in scriptures, Paul will say, just like Isaiah said, just like he said in David. What do you think was good? You think they were looking, they, they were holding the, 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 the thing to quote? No. When on the day of Pentecost, Peter was speaking. He said, we are not drunk as you suppose. These are not drunk as you suppose. But this was that which was spoken by prophet Joel. That in the last days, I will pour out my, of my spirit upon all flesh. You think he, he, he was reading? No. No. The spirit of God was communicating. He was receiving from the spirit of God. And everything he is receiving from the spirit of God, he knows to be true. He knows to be true. Now, you that he is talking to, if you want to check it out, you go check it out, you realize that he was right. And truth be told, he will be so accurate that, you know, because sometimes even in, in, in the Bible that we have, there are several translations, right? And, and some of these translations are not even accurate. Yeah, you know, if, if you're a good student of the Bible, you would have seen that. They are not accurate, not because they lied, no. You see, they are, it, it, communication has a lot to do with culture and, and um, experience, okay? So, if you are from a different culture and you take a word or a statement made by someone and interpret it from a different culture from which the person spoke, you, you may get a different meaning. Oh, that's the truth. You may get a different meaning. And then, because that's in this culture you're interpreting it, that's how they speak. Now, sometimes you may lose the original meaning because of culture and environment, vis-a-vis -vis the way you speak. But now, when you are speaking by the Holy Spirit, I want you to understand these things. When you are speaking by the Holy Spirit, you are speaking what is true. So when you bring or when you come to that place of truth, now it doesn't matter what culture you belong to. The Holy Spirit will bring forth the truth of that statement into your heart. And then now you understand and you eat the food of that word. Now a lot of people don't have this fellowship. That's what I'm saying. But it's something you need to have. So because they don't have this fellowship with the Holy Spirit, I said he's a gentle spirit. But devils are not gentle. They badge into your life like they own you. Yes. Now when I say badge into you, they don't badge, they don't force you to do this, no. They just come. The devil doesn't knock. You know, Jesus said it that anyone who doesn't come into the door but comes in through another way is a thief and a robber. Now, no one will come into another way and go and knock. No one will go to your window and be knocking. Hello, can I come in? <laughs> no. You knock at the door. And you knock because you, you, you mean well. Anyone who's coming through some other means will not care to knock. 
because they're coming through another means is seeking where it's open that they can jump in through. That's how the devil operates. So he doesn't go, hey, hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Nah, he doesn't. He just speaks to you straight on. You're going to die very soon. <laughs> uh, why am I hearing you're going to die? And suddenly fear fills your heart. You don't realize that you just heard the voice of the devil. And that's how I was telling you earlier, that's how a lot of people's lives have been destroyed. How do you think Judas went to commit suicide? What do you think happened to him? He was responding to a voice. Definitely not the voice of God. Definitely not the voice of Jesus. He was responding to a voice. People have woken up to do terrible things in this life. Because they were responding to that devil that did not knock. Just came up and told them things. Hey, you can steal that thing. Nobody will catch you. And they just get up and they respond to it. You see, so life in itself is, it, it, there's that separation from where you're supposed to be to where you are now. And Jesus came, and when he was done, he told his disciples of the one, but one thing you're going to do as believers is that you're going to cast out devils. Now, because he meant we're going to reclaim what is ours. We're going to reclaim what belongs to us. We're going to reclaim it. And reclaiming it, you are going to cast these wrong fellows out. You are going to bind them and cast them out. But you're going to start casting them out from having effect over your mind, over your speech. That's where you're going to start from. Praise God. That's the reason for this teaching. And next week, we're going to go into details with, with this, talking about what it means to follow Jesus. Praise God. Because my time is up. But I pray for you right now. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, anywhere the devil has gotten a hold over your life. Right now, I bind that devil over your mind, over your body, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be free. In Jesus' name. Now, some of you are going through different kinds of sicknesses and diseases. And you've done several things and still lingering. I command that devil to take his hands off you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That frequent pain, that migraine headache, I command you to leave them now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Every devil troubling your life, you that is watching me right now, I cast them out, out of your life, out of your environment, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of you, you're looking for things. Things are missing that you've been looking for. De demons hide things. Devils hide things. Oh, you don't know? <laughs> Listen, this month, they are going to see certain manifestations of God's spirit in your life as a result of this. Things that are missing, you will find them funnily. Because <laughs> you be, when you find them, you start wondering, uh, how come? It will be as though someone came to put it there. You will even argue with people. But what you didn't know, that that thing was hidden by devils. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I speak freedom into your heart, into your mind right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Have the best weekend ever. Bye.